this still, man. It took us a while, a few months, but we're finally together. You're on the correct team. One of the guys I was really highly anticipated. There's him going against Brew McCoy. This shows the amount of talent he has going up against the better players when he was facing in high school. Been able to make plays even though he's short for his size. Just look at this hit. It's a great strong hit for a guy's size. It's something that's why he was able to go to the SEC. Another big hit right there. Another reason why I'm really high on this guy and I love him. Mm-hmm. That's right. Chris Steele. Let's go. I told you all that this was one of my favorite players. And yes, he's finally back home. Took um, two basically commitments to other colleges, but he is finally back. I'm so happy for that. Their recruiting class is looking really well, especially with another player I'm mentioning coming back later. But then also we had news that Matt Fink, the quarterback, uh, like second or third string guy of USC, was looking to transfer, but he is coming back to USC. It was kind of interesting that <clears throat> they still had room on their team because he, even that story with Chris Steele, that he only committed to Oregon because he thought USC didn't have a spot on their team for him anymore. But luckily, Coach Helton was smart enough and made a spot for him. And luckily we got both these guys coming back to help out with depth and just the future of USC. And that's all I'm happy about really. right there a lot of these plays him pushing guys off him as a, a physical wide receiver uh, so I like a great comp of Juju Smith to him because that's exactly what he was obviously Juju was a lot bigger but you need guys like this especially when in when you're in the Pac-12 to go against a lot of the speedy corners and a little bit bigger at times free safeties but him just being on the team now with a guy like Kyle Ford on the other side, who's a really good player. I, his comp is Marquise Lee, in my opinion, an ex great wide receiver for USC. But just having them and I'm on our St. Brown there already is lethal, in my opinion. And yes, Kyle Ford, you could finally repost that picture of the both of you and Brew McCoy. He is finally coming back to USC, the wide receiver who once committed back over to Texas. But now he's back home again. Another guy who I was obviously really high on. Another top 10 guy in the whole entire nation. So I'm really happy that he's on the USC roster now. And then also we had Brendan Rice, the son of all-time all NFL great Jerry Rice. He named a top 11 of his final schools that he's going to choose between. And USC made the cut. So I'm very happy about that. Let's see if he could be even half as special as his father and that's still a good a player in my opinion to have on your roster especially for our college team. Then Nick Rakusevic, a guy who I'm really high on who was an ex-USC player and now free agent from the Orlando Magic said he's fine with the idea of staying over there in Orlando. I'm not really happy about that because it, it, it just seems like he's going to want to stay there for the money. And of course, <laughs> there's no sales tax or you don't have to do your taxes over there in Florida. So maybe that's why he wants to stay. But if he wants to come to a winner and a championship team, uh, Lakers will definitely have the door open if they strike out on a few of these guys, which everyone says that they are. But then Pat Hayden is, of course, in the news and they're saying that his whole interaction now he's being investigated with the whole uh, scholar fake scholarships to kids who didn't get there who aren't even playing the sports and everything like that and they're saying that the other guy who got caught in the basketball scandal he didn't get any jail time but he was on probation and they're saying that that was like the worst thing to happen to USC but Pat Hayton who is an ex-USC quarterback, who also the ex-president, who was here before. 
he did have a lot of turmoil stuff happen under his leadership that that didn't come out to light until recently so a lot of this is really his fault and hopefully he gets whatever it is that needs to be deserved as a punishment we'll just see how that's gonna go then John McKay this like ex great USC co uh, coach obviously I wasn't a fan at the time when he was coaching but he did say at the time when it was only eight schools in the Pacific Division, whatever you call it, Pac-12 now, that USC should have left that. And I've been saying that for a while that I think they should go to another conference or division just to see what they can do. And a lot of teams that do it get still high accolades like a Notre Dame who will sprinkle in certain teams that are really good, including USC to play against, but you're an independent. So you get to choose your 12 teams who you're going to play every single year, no matter who, no matter what conference, as long as they're available. I just believe that's the better way to go if you want to show how good you really are. And that's kind of what the schedule was like when Pete Carroll was there. Just play anybody, anywhere, anytime. And if you could do that for your whole entire schedule, I'd be very happy with that. Trey Jones is one of the top three finalists for the preseason Bob Cousy Award, which awards the best point guard in the nation in college. So that's good to see that they're really high on him. Obviously, I believe he should be number one. But let's get into some other stuff that Jason Tatum and Zion Williamson, both ex-Duke players, were invited to the Team USA minicamp. It's gonna be happening this summer where they're gonna go play, I believe, in China. So that should be pretty cool to see if they can actually make it, one of them or both of them. Another player on another team I like got invited too, but we'll get into that. You might have saw his name pop up there. And yes, we get a freaking rematch of our Elite Eight matchup with Michigan State in the Big Ten slash ACC thing that they do where all those teams play against each other from just those two conferences on just during like a certain week and usually it's been like indiana and sometimes michigan state here and there but i think we get to go to michigan state and hopefully pull off an upset which would be even sweeter in my opinion so hopefully that could go then javin delorier another player returning to duke did you have elbow surgery should be pretty much good to go in two to three weeks. So it's not something really crazy. It was just a minor surgery, but at least a lot of these guys pretty sure are either coming back because they had injuries and they're very small, but just an injury while you're going through your NBA draft stuff, it's gonna put you down a lot and pretty much make you miss out on a bunch of money. So they're good on to come back and hopefully prove that they belong in the NBA next season, hopefully. Now they're saying we see RJ Barrett in a Lakers uniform and they're saying he could be the next bust. I don't think so. I think he has a mentality of like a Kobe Bryant, like a T-Mac, some of those type of players. He's a good comp for. He just needs a better, more consistent outside shot. And if as long as you have that mentality, I think you can do a lot of good in the NBA, whether it's becoming an all-star or a really good solid contributing player for any team it's going to be tough for him he is lucky if he does land with the lakers because compared to the knicks you would have to go into a rebuild even as memphis and new orleans pelicans as well but the lakers they definitely have a solid chance of making the playoffs this next coming year so it wouldn't be all that hard but him coming off the bench being like a six man would be pretty awesome then 
Coach K of Duke is allowing another walk-on to come to Duke, but it's in the form of his grandson, which is pretty cool. Obviously, when you have the greatest college basketball coach of all time, it's probably gonna trickle down to somebody, and luckily his grandson probably has some talent. Hopefully it's not just a family, family thing, but we'll see how that goes. Should be very cool to see at some point in the future, next four or five years. Then they are moving the three-point line back in college basketball. I guess it's to the international length, so it's a, like about an inch or two farther back, but I mean, it's already too close. They need to push it back. I believe the NBA line, to compared to the old college line, is about three inches further back. And according to guys like Steph Curry or a lot of these other players, even LeBron at times, they shoot way farther back. Even Damian Lillard was almost doing like 30 footers and making them on a consistent basis in some of the playoffs he was in this year. So it's good to see they'll definitely be more prepared when coming into the NBA and it should be beneficial to a lot of these guys. Hollins was named another uh, Lakers assistant head coach. Pretty crazy having three guys on your coaching roster that were all full-time head coaches at one point. Usually don't see that, but in other ways it could be very, very beneficial because you just have guys, sometimes the head coach might not be able to get into some of his either role players or second or third star type of guys, but usually your assistants could get into those guys' ear a lot better. So I think it's a really good overall situation for the Lakers and should be, like I said, beneficial for them when it comes to being in the playoffs and hopefully into the finals the next couple of years. Then they're saying that LeBron would leave if they don't do this good in this free agency this year. Even though I believe that next year would be the bigger one when it's Anthony Davis is available but everybody's writing that this year is one of the greater years for free agents that are available if they do not accept their player options. It's a whoever's guessing game and who thinks it's better, but you just have to wait and see. I don't think he's really gonna leave as of this very second. He might ask for a trade within his year three or four. Could be, it could help the Lakers too because they could get rid of a guy sent a guy like LeBron send him to a good team but then get something good in return maybe from another third team trading but the Lakers are working out another big man and this guy is really big in Taco Fall who I know very well because he was at UCF and Duke played with them in the second round and nearly lost to them but this guy is like 7'6 and he's really huge and he is really slow but it's just at times he could be a great shot blocker and pretty much doesn't have to dunk or jump to dunk and that could be beneficial at times but having a guy that slow would not be really conducive to an NBA team nowadays but that's why you do the draft process you just look at everybody and anybody then Shaq is basically proclaiming that the Lakers need to do whatever they can to sign Klay Thompson I'm a 50-50 person when it comes to Klay Thompson I would obviously love him on the team but I can also see him being an injury prone guy like he's been with the Warriors the past few years and then you're just giving all that money to a guy who's aging like that could be pretty scary at times to spend so much money on that but I don't know I mean like Shaq says the Lakers have the money the power to do whatever they want he doesn't know why they're not spending the money on the top players that they need to but I'm pretty sure that's what's going to happen this next offseason. Then Kyle Kuzma mentioned in that other video with the, the Duke more news that there was another player I was going to mention that 
is going to try out for the Team USA this summer, and that's a guy in Kyle Kuzma. Pretty much deserves it. He's been a really stellar like diamond in the rough that nobody ever really thought was probably going to be a top player, and everybody, even myself, was surprised that he was selected in the first round. Yes, late in the first round, but still first round, and after that first year, a lot of people thought he should be selected at least top 10. So obviously the Lakers found a diamond in the rough, as I said, and hopefully he can do something and show what he can do for his country. Then the Lakers are pretty much, I believe that they're out of the Kyrie Irving sweepstakes, just because I had called it before. I had mentioned so many times before that I would kind of prefer him to be in Brooklyn because he is from there, that's his hometown. And it looks like Brooklyn made a trade to pretty much give up a bunch of space, salary space to be able to sign two guys officially from this free agent crop. So they're probably trying to get both a Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant over there. Even though Kevin Durant seems like he's gonna go to the New York Knicks, even though I believe he should go to Washington just because that's his hometown. If four players just went to their hometown, it'd be great. It would kind of suck for the Lakers because I really like Kuzma and he's from Detroit, but he would actually be good in Detroit. I just don't want to see a trade where the Warriors want to give up on Draymond Green and send him to his hometown of Detroit because then that means Blake Griffin was most likely to be included in that trade and Blake Griffin on the Warriors just sounds dangerous to me, but he does have a huge contract years the next couple years so it kind of you're putting yourself in the luxury tax of paying a lot more but i would like a blake griffin just another guy who can't stay healthy though point in these trades obviously he's a good enough athlete and good enough of a point guard in this NBA to run an NBA team by himself but with LeBron on your team he's gonna be your main point forward as they like to call it so I just think a play like this would be great on another team just not with the Lakers anymore of course I'm not saying marketing is gonna be available in trades for the Lakers Unless I would say they swap those picks, you could send Markin in and to, for Lonzo Ball to the Lakers, but then switch your picks also because it seemed like the other news of trades that it was just the Lakers getting the pick just that when you had to give up Lonzo Ball. And obviously, I reported the other news that saying that even Phoenix wasn't really offering that, but this could work because they get their point guard of the future. And then you have to miss out on a guy you're probably gonna have to pay, but a guy like this with LeBron. And obviously you can see there why I like Vucevic a lot. He will actually go and try to defend, but obviously you get posterized. Another player that's usually talked about with the Lonzo Ball stuff is this guy, Chris Dunn. Obviously a great guy coming off there if they do decide that trade, but I did say that Laurie Marketing would be an excellent choice, but that's just if they want to get rid of him. I don't know why you draft Wendell Carter Jr. Guys at the same position who could do similar things, but you know, Car Carter isn't as good of a three-point shooter as marketing, which is why I would want him on my team. But that's just the way I see it. I see a lot of these trade scenarios going on for the Lakers as uh, maybe okay, but in the end, I think it could actually hurt the organization a lot more than it could help it in the near future but they're saying that now is the best time to probably even do an Anthony Davis trade since when it comes to players being offered I said this before that the Lakers do have the better type of players being offered and multiple types I just don't like how they did the type of trade I'm about to talk about 
but the Lakers did say that Brandon, Brandon Ingram is going to be completely fine. Obviously, they're going to say that just to try to use him more as a trade bait, I believe, and try to calm down these other teams' nerves about him not being able to be 100% healthy the rest of his career. Just hope he can, if, as long as even if he does stay with the Lakers. But he could be part of a big trade package along with Kyle Kuzma and Josh Hart, but also involving like the pretty much the three of the top four teams in this year's draft. So they would try to get uh, John Morant and I believe it was Zion Williamson to the New Orleans Pelicans, but the Grizzlies would get Kyle Kuzma and a few first round picks and Josh Hart or Brandon Ingram would go to some other places, but then also the Lakers would get Anthony Davis if they did that with the Pelicans, the, that three team deal, but that's the only player they're gonna get in return. I think if they threw in another older veteran type of player and, and with an expiring contract in there, I think that would be very beneficial for the Lakers to see what they could do with that. But that trade right there is something I'm not really all that high on. And then you saw all those highlights of all those guys, Lonzo Ball, Chris Dunn, and Laurie Markkinen. Of course, they're still talking about, as you've seen those pictures, Lonzo Ball with either the Phoenix Suns or the Chicago Bulls at those picks at six and seven. But the news came out that Phoenix hasn't reportedly offered the Lakers that first round pick for Lonzo Ball. But you just never know. They could be just blowing smoke to try to get something else out of the Lakers, which I hope not. But then you're uh, another th this thing I'm trying to start because when I just was just thinking about it, it makes perfect sense to pair a guy like Laurie Markkinen with LeBron. But I don't know if the Chicago Bulls would be willing to part with a guy who I think has all-star talent and could be at times better than Dirk Nowitzki in his whole career. He has the ability to score, he's athletic, he could score inside, outside, he's a great three-point shooter, and he's seven foot, so he's an even better, more athletic version of even Paul Gasol that's been with the Lakers a few years. But pairing him with the LeBron, you'd probably have to give up, I would say, do a Brandon Ingram, Lonzo Ball, and then swap your first round picks. So the Lakers will be picking a little bit later, but the Bulls end up getting two talented young guys and the, a higher pick in this year's draft. But that's just the way I see it. Just because uh, Markkinen loves wearing LeBron shoes, kind of got my juices flowing a little bit in my mind thinking of what could possibly happen if they're on the same team. And that's what I'm throwing out there for the YouTube world to figure out and see if it, it really does come true or not. for trade because Houston wants to get rid of a bunch of guys. I believe he can be a really good player alongside LeBron. Obviously, he can do stuff off the dribble, get in to do dunks, but he's a great three-point shooter as well. Would love a guy on the team, even though he's a liability on defense at times, but I think it's a great choice, and hopefully you won't have to give up too much for him and don't really know about his contract, but it should be interesting. So, JaVale McGee stated that the Lakers would have made the Western Conference Finals at least if LeBron was healthy the whole entire season. I think that's a possibility. It could have happened. Uh, Warriors seem to be tough, but now that they're breaking down, it could have been uh, a matchup that could have went seven games, but Warriors most likely would have beat them, but it still would have been a positive outcome for Lakers fans and the Lakers organization to make it that far after five but now six straight years of missing the playoffs, even though your whole entire franchise before that, including all the times you went to the playoffs and didn't, it was five years for like over 50 plus years, which is amazing to think about. We've been spoiled 
obviously even before I was born, but yes, we're definitely really spoiled. And then you saw highlights of a guy who I think can be very uh, good for the Lakers team, especially a guy who can play with LeBron, who's a, a definitely a three-point shooter, can somewhat play some defense, depending on the type of matchup he has, but he can be a liability sometimes. And he's still athletic enough to get around guys, get inside for dunks, layups, make plays like that. And since Houston was basically gonna gut their team and try to get something going, I don't know why, for James Harden, but they're gonna try to get rid of all his guys again. And if they're gonna shop Eric Gordon for pretty cheap, I want the Lakers to do something. And it could really help our team, especially in the three-point department. Then there's three baseball players from USC that got selected. And I believe another guy from Duke got selected as well. But obviously I don't cover baseball that much. But congrats to all those four guys. Don't really remember their names, but congrats to all of them. Maybe they could make the uh, be in the World Series and be the MVP of the World Series, hopefully. Then yes, uh, uh, my guy Tom DeLong was interviewed by Rolling Stone this week at some time pretty much about this whole UFO and everything and about uh, his new album as well. It's a great read if you guys want to go look it up. A lot of big things happening like I've been saying the past couple years and luckily they're fi finally coming to fruition. And I believe this Friday coming up too is another episode of that unidentified, some more spacey uh, shizzle going on. And it was pretty crazy the last time and obviously not a lot of 100% footage, which is why I kind of don't believe it, but that's just the way we gotta go. And my video is running out, but I'll come back. And yes, don't miss out. Like I was trying to say before, I was losing space to check out Tom DeLonge's new series, Identified on History. They don't call it the History Channel anymore for some reason. So on History, should be premiering sometime February, February on Friday at 10 o'clock at night. And yeah, like I was saying, it was kind of believable and unbelievable at times, but they're making a compelling argument a little bit. Just want to see more information like everything, like how I always say. But yes, thanks for watching people. Like and subscribe, comment down below. Let me know what y'all think. And yeah, in that interview too, he says that there is still a future where he can play with Blink-182 and he's still really good friends with them. It's always been overblown and exploited out in the media and they don't just know what they're talking about, but he still wants to play with them. Obviously, he's still very busy and wants to get his ideas, his ADD over and done with, and then most likely be able to go back to them at some point, which should be very fun and interesting. Still can't wait for Angels and Airwaves' new album this year. But in, a, in that fact too, I hopefully I did a better job in this video than saying in my opinion, and obviously too many times, I think I slipped up on obviously. In my opinion, I believe I used a lot when I rewatched my last video. So I try to cut that down like I try to cut down on my blinks, which I think I've been doing pretty good so far. I just look psychotic at times. But thanks again for watching, like I said, and have a great day. Thank you.